1961, John F. Kennedy really is a breath of fresh air on the American landscape. He's 42 years old. He's a war hero. He's a beautiful young wife, and he represents the hopes for the future of the United States. Now the trumpet summons us again. Early 1960s, when President Kennedy comes into office, is a really dynamic and tense time in international relations because it's the Cold War, and nobody wants to make it a hot war. 1961 was a year of international tensions. You have the Soviet Union in control of Poland and various other parts of Eastern Europe. There's a new wall dividing Berlin, and then the Bay of Pigs. Kennedy's failed effort that he inherited from Eisenhower to overthrow Fidel Castro. So there really is a sense that Kennedy needs to show that there's something he can achieve. One of the greatest challenges for Kennedy in this moment is the battle for space. The Russians have successfully launched the first satellite ever to circle the Earth. During the Eisenhower administration, on October 4th, 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first satellite, Sputnik. It the dawn of a new era. Just a month later, the Soviets launch another satellite into space, and it's got a live dog on board. All over the world, people are ooing and eyeing about Soviet space prowess. And America seems woefully behind. Their efforts at space exploration had resulted in numerous mishaps. At Cape Canaveral, the Navy rockets, known as vanguards, were disintegrating. There is no area where the United States received a greater setback and are being second in the field of space in the 1950s. It was very serious at the time. Lyndon Johnson said the Romans ruled the world because they controlled the roads. The British ruled the world because they controlled the sea. And whoever controls space will rule the world. By the time Kennedy becomes president, the space race is really shaping up to be like a giant interstellar chess match between the Soviet Union and the United States. On April 12, 1961, the Soviets launched the first person into outer space with Yuri Gagarin, who makes a full orbit of the Earth. Just a couple of weeks later, the U.S. tests its Mercury Atlas rocket, but it blows up 43 seconds after liftoff. And then, in August, Soviet astronaut Yerman Titov makes 17 orbits around the Earth and stays in space for more than 25 hours. Kennedy's got this public relations disaster really on his hands on what are we gonna do? We need to find something we can beat the Russians in. This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. There are those who are incredibly excited about the exploration of this new frontier. At the same time, there are others who are deeply concerned about how much money is being spent on the space race. The amount of money that Kennedy was asking for was phenomenal at the time for a government project. The Manhattan Project, biggest, most expensive science and engineering project that had been done up to that point, was close, but still less than the $25 billion it was going to take to get America to the moon in 1960s dollars. So Kennedy has the unenviable task of somehow trying to inspire the American people to move aggressively on this space initiative. And he's able to do that in a speech that he delivers at Rice University in September of 1962. This generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. Kennedy's real challenge in the moon race was sticking to this idea that this ultimately was a worthy measure of American ingenuity. The eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, 
but by a banner of freedom and peace. And it's a beautiful and hopeful message about the tremendous opportunity before Americans. That goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. The way that John F. Kennedy frames this is that if the United States can put a man on the moon, then we can do anything that we can solve inequality, that we can solve economic disparity. And so this idea of space is intimately connected to this idea of the United States being innovative, being a first world superpower. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Unfortunately, John Kennedy is assassinated in 1963, so he'll never see the culmination of his bold vision to land a man on the moon. But ultimately, his vision helped to shape decades to come. <laughs> 